Good morning, everybody. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. Why don't you worship with us? want you to know that uh, you know, I've been thinking about all this social distancing and stuff and how difficult it is for us to gather together and get close. So um, if any of you uh, need to be prayed for today because you've got some illness or you got some worry, I brought some social distancing anointing oil with me <laughs> and I'd be happy to use it on all of you. So just thought I'd let you know. Okay. All right. Andy, you said yes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye. They're leaving. Okay. Um, there's a, a lot of things going on today, but the first thing I want to do uh, before we get too far into this is I want to take time to uh, recognize our students that received uh, scholarships from our men's and women's clubs here. So um, if, if y'all are here, when I read your name, if you could just step out of your car and stand beside your car, and then, um, I, um, actually, it might be easier if you guys, and then after I get done, if you could come up to the fence here, I'll hand you your, your uh, certificates and, and those kind of things. So we'll begin with Brenda Ulrich. Is she here? Brenda, are you here? Uh, Brenda. 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 I just have to read it right. Is who? It's her daughter. Yeah. So close. And 
And so, um, uh, because I never get anything right, just my, my way of doing things, um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna say this right, but if Hunter Wilson is here. Come on, stand up, there he is, come on. Woohoo! All right. And then there's uh, where did it go here? I gotta find it. There it is. All right. And then we have a young lady by the name of of uh, Ivy Whitaker. Woo! Ivy, would you like to? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let me hand these out. Tell them congrats. Ivy, right, since I have your first, I'll give it to you. Okay. There's two. Now, um, the, the, the check with the name to it, that one, the different name is like this. Oh, for Hunter. There's that. Uh, I give up. Hunter, there's yours, and the, the men on the end of the side. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 All right. Give a big hand. Yeah. All right. And then uh, two other things. Um, one is, uh, today is uh, Bob McClellan's 90th birthday. Is, is Bob here yet? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. He's not here yet, so shall we sing it at the end? We'll do it at the end when he gets here. Okay. At the end of the service, we'll sing happy birthday to him, and I'll give some more explanation of what we're doing, but it's his birthday, so we'll be celebrating that. And then finally, um, today we have a special... I won't call her a guest. Special friend that's going to be uh, preaching with us for us uh, this morning. And this will be her last Sunday with us as she moves on. She is officially a professor in North Carolina. What's the? South Carolina. South Carolina. Columbia International University. Columbia International University. So she's moving on down the road or up the road. And we just want to bless her. Um, and we're privileged to have her come to speak uh, to us this morning. And when she gets done, then we'll have some other things that we'll do in her honor and her family's honor. With that, let's pray and let's get started. Lord, I want to thank you ever so much for bringing us together, for the blessings that you have given to us in the midst of all this mm, stuff that's going on. I just ask for you to continue to guide us continue to share your wisdom with us that we will make the right choices and while we're here today may we experience your presence in a very powerful way for lord the church is not about a building the church is about people we're your church gathered together today to worship and honor you and to receive what you have for us in jesus name amen Yeah. 
so much for all that you're doing, for the blessings that uh, that you have given to all of us, but in particular the blessings you give to Paula and her family. And I ask, Lord, that you open our that as we open our hearts and minds to receive what, what we have, that you will use Paula's words, her thoughts, her ideas, and her voice to share your message with each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Alright, here's some stealing back a clip, because I only have one hand here since the mic stand he brings me a clip and my notes that you guys can't see don't blow away. Let's start. Okay, so the last 
two times that I preached, it was a little more maybe academic. We had a big passage. We really dug into it. I had a lot of fun doing it. But that's really not the mood that I am in this week or this morning. So we're going to do something a little bit different. And I hear the air conditioners have all kicked up in the cars now. But when I'm done reading this list, if you know what list I'm reading, I want you to roll down your window and yell out what the list is. So here's the list. Lava Lava Island, Avalanche Ranch, Fiesta, Serengeti Trek, Power Lab, Crocodile Dock, High Seas Adventure, Pandamania, Sky, Halfway There, Kingdom Rock, Weird Animals, Everest, Cave Quest, Maker Fun Factory, Shipwrecked, Roar. What is it? All right, I hear one really good, strong kid voice back there yelling, VBS, I see some other hands. Good job, guys. So these VBS weeks that I just read were some of the best weeks of my life and probably some of the best weeks of my kids' lives. They still remember all kinds of things about VBS. And when I took the job at Columbia International, I thought, hey, you know what, though? I'm going to be really sad to leave Brooksville, but I have one more summer left. We're going to do VBS. We're going to go to Kids of Flame Camp. We're going to take a youth mission trip, and it's going to be awesome. But as we all know, public health had other plans, and we didn't get to do our live VBS this year, but we will be back. So because I'm feeling sort of a, a VBS deficit, a little lack of VBS in my life, that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to have a little vacation Bible school moment in place of the sermon. And we're going to review some of the all-time greatest Bible points that we've learned in VBS in the time that I've been here. So I've worked with VBS here at First Methodist from 2004 all the way through 2019 in some way, shape, or form. We moved here in 2003, but we snuck back to Land Lake so the kids could see their old friends that summer. But from 2004 on, I've been here it's been great, and we're going to relive a little bit of that this morning. So I want to just stop and, and mention that not only was VBS a great week in my life and in my kids' lives, but I think our VBS weeks are some of the greatest weeks in the life of this church. And this isn't an exhaustive list of volunteers by any means, but when we get together for VBS, we will have between 30 and 40 youth helpers. We'll have Miss Debbie in the kitchen, Miss Elaine taking pictures, Miss Christina in the nursery, Miss Trish keeping track of paperwork, Miss Kim sweating outside with all the games, Miss Lynn on crafts, Miss Janie on drama, Miss Kelly just kind of everywhere, JB, myself, and all these other great cast members doing outrageous things and making gigantic, absolutely huge messes in the sanctuary. And I really know, I'm positive, that Ed did not think there was any way I was going to get all the confetti up off the floor after last year's VBS, but I did. We always do. And of course, we can't leave Larry out. He's a part of these weeks, and it's kind of like those home improvement shows where the designers have this vision, and the builders say, you're crazy, we can't do that. So every year we tell Larry, we want floating balloons, we want a full-size ship, we want animals that roar, or whatever it is that we want. And Larry makes that vision happen. So also over the years, some of us moms, like JB and myself and Lynn and Debbie, we got smart, and we said, you know, our kids could do this. So in the recent years, you see Shelby and Valerie in the kitchen, Elizabeth making crafts, Brittany Jane, and all of my kids leading drama and playing the characters in the opening and the closing programs. And of course, I can't leave Sydney out because we always stuck her with the crew that needed the most behavioral intervention. She's an amazing behavior management person, so we always had Sydney there. In any case, I love BBS. And like I said, I thought I had one more here, but I didn't get it this summer. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at some of the greatest Bible points of all time. So let's get started. Last year at Roar, we learned that when life is scary, God is good. And that goes with a lot of scriptures, but especially with Joshua 1.9, where it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And old BBSers out there in the cars, I know you're singing that song already. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. But when life is scary, God is good. And life's been a little scary lately, right? But God is good in so many ways. 
And one of the most important ways that God shows us his goodness is by being right here with us wherever we are. Way back at Avalanche Ranch and again at Fun Factory and Crocodile Dock, we had the Bible point that told us God is with us everywhere and all the time. And when Jesus is with us, he gives us the power to handle whatever life sends our way. So at Power Lab and at Everest, we were taught that Jesus has the power to do many things, including having the power to provide for us. Philippians 4.19 tells us that God will supply all our needs. Jesus has the power to comfort us. John 14, 15, and 16, in fact, that whole chapter talks about how the Lord is sending the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to be with us and to help us here on earth. Jesus gives us the power to be healed. He heals us, 1 Peter 2, 24. Jesus has the power to forgive us. Matthew 9, 6, he not only healed the paralyzed man, but he forgave him. He said that he was standing up to walk to show that Jesus had the power to forgive sins. And this is one of my favorite Bible points from back in the day. Jesus gives us the power to be thankful. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful when we go through really difficult and really trying times. But Jesus was a living example on how to be thankful no matter what. And as we take communion, when we take communion, we always remember that Jesus paused to give thanks, even on the night when he would be betrayed and start his journey to the cross. Jesus gives us the power to help others. Luke 6.38 reminds us that when we give to others, what we need will be given back to us in full measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, so that we will then have even more power to help more people. Jesus gives us the power to be brave. He talks about it in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. That reminds us that we have nothing to fear because the Lord is our helper. And the verse that no one ever forgets, John 3, 16, reminds us that Jesus gives us the power to live forever, to have eternal life with him. And finally, we learned that Jesus gives us the power to tell others about God. When we read Acts chapter 2 and we see how ordinary people were filled with Jesus' power and were able to take the message to people that they didn't even speak the same language with, they took that message all the way to the ends of the earth. So during our BBS weeks, again, I just want to recap. We learned that Jesus gives us so much power. He provides for us. He has the power to comfort us. He has the power to heal us, to forgive us. He has the power to help us be thankful, even when it's tough. He has the power to help us help others, to help us be brave, and to help us tell others about God. So it goes without saying that life is a little scary and a little uncertain right now. So knowing that Jesus has the power to help us, to help us through everything, is great. But we also need to know how can we connect with Jesus? How can we connect with that power source so that we can stand strong? when life is challenging. And if you were with us back in 2013 at Kingdom Rock, you know that we learned how to stand strong. We're just gonna review a little bit of that right now. So in just a minute, I'm gonna ask you guys to roll down your windows again because we're gonna help ourselves remember how to stand strong in tough times, BBS style. But first, let's remember some of the things that help us connect with God's power. We pause for a second to flip my notes down or we're gonna lose it all. Okay, so back at Kingdom Rock, we learned that our family, including our church family and friends, help us to stand strong. Prayer helps us stand strong. God's love, his never-ending love, helps us to stand strong. Reading our Bibles helps us to stand strong. And trusting God helps us to stand strong. All right, so... Lean away from your speakers, because I'm going to yell a little bit too. If you can, roll down a window. And when we get to the stand strong part, I want to hear you scream it out. Pierce, I'm counting on you. Lead the screaming. Right? Oh, Step on up. Oh, Here we go. Pierce says he always leads the screaming. All right, so our family and our friends help us to stand, stand strong. strong. Prayer helps us to Stand strong. God's love helps us stand strong. Reading our Bible helps us to stand strong. Oh, I almost heard you, parking lot. Here's your last chance. And trusting God helps us stand strong. Woo, that was good. Back, back left corner from stage left. You guys have it going on. All right. So great job. 
at that last one as we head toward the end of the message this morning. We're going to take a closer look at trusting God. Remember that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He will show you where to go and he'll show you how to get there. Back at our Sky BBS in 2012, side note, that's the BBS where my nine-year-old Pierce almost got sent up in a real hot air balloon by himself due to a malfunction. So that was in itself an exercise in trusting God. But at Sky, we learned some very important things about trusting God. We learned that you can trust God no matter where you are, whether you're in Brooksville or South Carolina or anywhere on earth. You can trust God no matter how you feel. And this next one's really important. You can trust God no matter what people do or what they don't do. And you can trust God no matter what happens. Why can we trust God? We can trust God because of this truth from Romans 8, 38 and 39. And it says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So whether you went to your first BBS last year or you grew up attending all of these great BBS weeks we've been talking about, or if you'll be going to your first BBS next year at Rocky Railway, let's remember these Bible points as we head toward whatever this fall has for us. Even when life is scary, God is good, and Jesus is always with us to give us power and help us to stand strong. We can trust him no matter what because of his great love for us. Man, I almost made it to the end. <laughs> A love so big and so strong that nothing can pull us away from it. So let's pray for a minute and see if I can get it back together. Father, thank you so much for the truth of your word, for the Bible points that are still so true, whether we learned them in 2004 or 2010 or just this year, or maybe we learned them in 1960. Whenever we learn these truths, God, they are still true today, and we thank you, and we ask that you will help us remember that you are with us and that you give us power and that we can trust you no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. So I think the tears showed up a minute ago because of this last part. I knew it was going to be hard for me to say this last little part to you guys, but I really want to say it. It's not part of the sermon, and our official sermon time is over, but because I'm heading up to South Carolina, and because I won't be here every Sunday from now on, now I'll be here some Sundays. I've got a mom and a brother and um, in-laws and cousins and all kinds of people in Brooksville, and I count this as my hometown, and I'm leaving a son, yes, but he's coming with me. <laughs> um, I got a son in Tampa. Uh, Pierce and Lee will be here worshiping at least through the first of the year, so I'm not disappearing, but I'm not going to be here all the time like I have been. And because of that, there's a couple of really important things that I want to say about this church. Try to hear them, even though I'm sure my voice is going to crack somewhere in here. So I asked Andy to play the song, I Want to Go to Church This Morning, and, and even though it's high for him, he obliged and did a great job putting that together, so thanks for that. And I want to talk about wanting to go to church in just a sec. So when we moved to Brooksville in 2003, we thought we would attend another not-to-be-named church. But Paisley was starting second grade at MSC. She's my oldest daughter, for those of you who don't know her. She was seven at the time, and she put her foot down as the oldest child and said that she wanted to go to the, quote, school church. And so for better or worse, that's how you guys got stuck with us. We walked to church the first Sunday, and Kelly was afraid that we might be homeless and without a car, but she got used to us, realized that we just like to walk, and the rest is kind of history. So as I look back over these last 17 years of MSC chapels, BBS, children's worship, confirmation retreats, youth trips, and camp, I want to remind us all of one really important thing. None of these things happen without this church. Not the church across the street, not the church in another town, but this church, your church. In New Orleans in 2006, at Work Camp with the Youth, 
a mom of a soldier came up to us. She saw our shirts, and she told us that when she adopted her son, who was now serving overseas, he had a Bible in his hand that said he accepted Jesus at the First United Methodist Church in Brooksville. This church, this one, matters. Other churches are important too, and we are all part of the body of Christ. But as much as we are always thinking of ways to do better and to be better, I think it's important to stop and reflect on the fact that in spite of our human selves, God moves here. He changes lives here. The chorus of the song that Andy sang was, take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher in a verse when they've seen me at my worst, to the love or where they've seen me at my worst, to the love I had at first, oh, I want to go to church. People have had and will have complaints about this church, but there are people here who have seen me at my worst, and yet I can still depend on them. More importantly, I see people that I knew as kids and youth come back here when they're in pain or when they have something to celebrate because there's something about this place and this people and that something, that someone, is the Holy Spirit who says, you belong with us and we love you. We have your picture on our walls and in our hearts. And we care whether your dreams come true. And we care if your dreams fall apart. I've seen people returning who collapse sobbing into someone's arms before they even make it through the door. I've seen people who make it through the door and lay all of their pain and fear down in a familiar pew. Or get prayer for their most urgent needs at the altar, even if they haven't been here in 10 years. I may go on to worship and work at a church that has every ministry we ever dreamed of here but are still struggling to make a reality. I may worship at a church that's reaching all of the people that we want to reach but haven't quite figured out how to yet. But you need to remember that you, Brussels United, are as irreplaceable as you are imperfect. Please keep being the church that people think of when they want to go to church, even if they haven't been here since they left for college in 2007. I hope that things get back to better than normal very soon. But I do believe that in this really crazy, wild season, God has things to do here. Maybe the birth of home groups that we need and, and haven't had, maybe that will happen while we wait to reopen. But probably the things God has to do here right now are things that I haven't even imagined. So do them. Thank you guys for everything. I love you. going to, uh, all right, Diana and Kelly, I think you all got some things you'd like to share here.
Um, on behalf of the SPR committee, uh, we want to thank so much, Paula, for all you've done over the years, as you just described. That's a really long time. Wow. <laughs> we have been so blessed for many years. I only know of a few of the vacation Bible schools, only because Brenda was a part of it, mm -hmm. but the countless adrenalines, the winter retreats, I'm grateful for the time I got to spend. I'm already emotional from this weekend. It doesn't yeah. count. Um, anyway, I am just so grateful and so thankful, and we just want to do a small token for all you've done. And for anybody who chose to bring cards today or notes of encouragement for Polly, you can bring them and give them to somebody, and we'll bring them today. If not, the next couple of weeks, please bring your thanks, bring your encouragement, and we can send them to her because there is mail that goes to South Carolina. And so we are so thankful. And she'll be in the parking lot next Sunday. So we one more Sunday to see her. But we are so grateful and thank you so much for all you. So thank you guys so much. And after service, I will put my mask on so we can hug appropriately. Um, just appreciate you more than worse to play. Okay. I have one more announcement before we're done, which has nothing to do with it. Okay. Well, um, why don't you do your announcement? I can do it. Then I'm going to. Uh, yeah. If uh, while we're while we're waiting, if Paula's family would like to come right up here, stay in the shade, and just come up here and line yeah. up together. And just one quick announcement while they're all getting ready. Um, as you all know, Dana and Matt Rodriguez has had their baby. Baby Robbie is here. Yay! Um, what I would like to do is encourage everybody over the next few weeks, you can bring it on Sunday or on Mondays to the church. We're going to have a diaper drive. We all know, as moms, that's what we need is diapers. So um, bring our, your diapers, any sizes at all. And if you bring them here or Mondays, Trish said it's a good day to bring them to the church office. And then I will collect them after a while and bring them to them. So thank you, guys. Go ahead, lay it down. So as, uh, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is as the family gathers here, I'm going to ask you guys to roll down your windows, pick your hands out, and we're going to pray for this family. And we're going to, we're going to, um, I the right word here. We're going to uh, grieve with them, but we're also going to celebrate with them. One of the texts for me is, first thoughts only, which says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in every time, give thanks. God empowers us to do that, too. And God is doing a new thing. So, um, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Alright, we're going to pray for them, so stick your hands out and let's pray. Lord, these are your children that you have chosen to enter into a new time of life. And I know, Lord, from my own life experience, that it's never easy. But when you're leading, it's amazing. So I ask, Lord, that your amazing gift to them would be received with whole heart, that they would rejoice in what you're doing, that they would have more reason to smile and laugh than to mourn, and that when all is said and done, as they look back over their lives, they will continue to see your hand upon their shoulders. They will continue to see you as you lead them into the future. So Lord, for the blessing they've been to us, may that blessing move with them and become a new blessing for another church and another environment. Thank you, Lord, for all that they have done, for all that they are, and for their faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
happened yet. We've got one more thing. We have among us somebody that just turned 90. Now, I have no idea how that happened, but it did. And his name is Bob, Bob McClellan, and he's sitting in that red car right there. And here's what we're going to do. All right, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to sing happy birthday to him. And then, pay attention to the, to the ushers, because they're hopefully going to guide you. But we're going to have him line up right here. We're going to have a microphone that will be out there. So you guys will be able to speak to Bob, and he'll be able to hear you, if you so desire. So what I'm, what I'm asking for us to do is to effectively, we'll sing happy birthday, and then effectively, if, if you all could leave, and then come back around, and if you have to go someplace, take a right. If you want to come back to say something to Bob, take a left, and come in through the back, and then we'll go one by one. If it seems a little confusing, sorry. <laughs> it's the best we could do with what we have. So let's sing together as we celebrate Bob's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 